I was about 10 years old when I first started watching these science fiction shows. I remember at that time, Star Trek was my favorite. I still watch science fiction shows and movies, and just like many of you here, I have a long list of my favorites. But at the age of 10, watching these amazing, intelligent machines in these science fiction movies was an amazing experience. Commander Data for Star Trek, this can, he can be one example. I saw him talking like us. He could learn like us about new things. I saw him doing a number of things that only humans could do. And then I started thinking, maybe these machines, these intelligent machines, could be my friends. Maybe they can be my teachers at the school and teach me about new things. Maybe they can be my medical doctors and help me when I'm sick. So I started imagining this whole new world with these amazing intelligent machines in them. But then I'll go back to reality. And reality had a different story. I wouldn't really see myself interacting with those amazing machines. So there was a gap between reality and fiction or what I was imagining. And at the age of 10, experiencing this gap, it deeply impacted me. Till today, it has kept me curious about learning artificial intelligence, or what we generally call as AI. This curiosity first led me to an undergraduate degree related to robotics, and then a PhD in computer science that was focused on designing artificial intelligence. Now, after 20 years of this curiosity for AI, I have finally found answer to my two basic questions. First, why does this gap between reality and fiction, or what I was imagining, still exist? And second, how are the AI experts or the AI professionals trying to overcome this gap? About 10 years ago, back in 2007, I started reading about these AI techniques and AI algorithms. I was curious about how these things really work. And I found out most of the successful AI algorithms just require two entities. They require some data, and they require a teacher to tell the AI what's inside that data. Let me give you an example. I'm showing some images over here. This could be the data for AI. But at this point, the AI does not understand what these images represent. The way AI see these images is some bunch of numbers. To make sense out of these numbers, a human can act as a teacher and tell the AI these images contain a cat, a dog, and a car. In some senses, I see that this process of learning is very similar to the way we human parents teach our kids. Look at that cat. Look at this dog. That's my car over there. But in the context of AI, there is one, at least one main difference. And that's a very important difference. AI requires large volume of data to learn something that may be apparently very simple to humans. For example, if AI is to learn to distinguish between a cat and a dog, 
it may require thousands of cat and dog images. And then somebody also has to do that teaching task. Someone literally has to go through each image and tell the AI, this image contains a cat, and that image contains a dog, and so on for all the images. Now imagine, if you have to train an AI for each small everyday task, developing such databases for each task could become a practical challenge. And I ran into these same issues during my PhD. Let me share with you that during my PhD, I was designing an AI program that could analyze medical data like MRI and then help a radiologist better understand about cancer and many other serious diseases that are challenging to cure. The problem was AI required large volume of medical data. Now collecting large volume of medical data in real world is a challenge. We wanted to train an AI with small amount of medical data. Because if we could train an AI with small amount of medical data, that could potentially bring a lot of impact to the medical domain. So we went ahead with this plan, and we trained an AI with that small medical data, and I started calling that trained AI as the med expert, med from the word medical. Unfortunately, the results of the med expert were very bad. At this point, I started thinking, how do we humans learn so efficiently? Sometimes, even one example is enough. For example, if I have to learn how an airplane looks like, I don't need a hundred thousand photographs of an airplane to learn that. Sometimes even a diagram is enough. I started talking about that to people from different professions, and a neuroscientist told me that we humans, while learning something new, we also utilize the diverse set of previous knowledge that we have already learned. So if I already know how a bus looks like, it means that could potentially help me in quickly learning how a train looks like. If I know how a table looks like, that can help me in quickly learning how a chair looks like. Similarly, if I understand the difference between a cat and a cow, that can help me in quickly learning maybe the difference between a puppy and a horse. And at this point I realized maybe the med expert, my AI program that I just learned, it was only aware of the medical data. Maybe it requires a diverse set of knowledge while learning something new. So I went back to my computer and I changed my strategy. Do you know what I did next? I learned another AI program. And that AI program was supposed to learn about the general things, like how an apple looks like, how a star looks like, how buildings look like, and about 200 different general concepts. Because these concepts were all general, I started calling this AI as the general expert. In the next step, I require the general expert to transfer its knowledge to the med expert. The med expert then goes again and tries to learn that same task, same medical task with limited medical data. Interestingly, the performance improves from previously 50% to 78%. That was amazing to see. What happened here? 
General expert and med expert are the two artificial experts here. General experts collaborated with the med expert. The diverse knowledge of general expert helped the med expert to improve on its task. In AI, we call this as transfer learning. I see this as a beautiful collaboration between two artificial experts. Later in my PhD, we further worked on the mathematical theory of this collaboration between artificial experts, and the performer further went up to about 90%. From this overall experience, I learned a number of things and in a way, I also learned my answer to those two basic questions that I stated earlier. First, why is there a gap between reality and fiction, or what I was imagining? The re answer is, AI requires very large volume of data to reliably learn something new and collecting large amount of data for every small task is a practical challenge. Second, how are the AI experts trying to overcome this gap? Many AI experts are using the concept of diversity and collaboration in the context of AI. So you can see that Diversity and collaboration, these concepts are not just unique to human interactions, but even for these machines that we are learning, that are learning about our world with AI, these are of utmost importance. And these AI programs and techniques that we are training, they are aimed at helping us to better understand about cancer, and many other serious diseases that are challenging to cure right now. With the success of such AI, potentially thousands of people could be saved in future. 